Pumpus Cat, I bought a prepper product that I hope I'll never use. What is it? Yep, I bought me one of these. So I'm going to go through it and explain it and why I bought it. Uh, this is the back part of it. We can have a look at that. Kind of cool, eh? This was very, very expensive. Now what I do is I save my pennies up and I put them in a jar. And every so often I'll spend money on an expensive prepping item or a nice treat for me and Kitty. So this was 319 Canadian dollars, which you can do the maths. It's about 40% off as American, so it's about 240 American dollars. Pretty pricey, eh? So it's from EcoTest, the Ukrainian co uh, company, and this is the Tierra P Plus. And I bought this specifically for various reasons. There are other types of radiation detection monitoring equipment available, but this has two features that I particularly like. One feature I like is that you actually have to buy batteries for this, and they are the batteries. And these guys sent me free batteries, so I like that. And the batteries last about 6,000 hours. Now, as you get through time and having this on, the closer you get to 6,000 years, the less accurate this will be. Uh, it does tell you what the normal radiation levels are. And I'll put a few slides up and you can see what the radiation levels are around the place. Let's find out how much radiation I have here. Now, this is idiot proof, right? It's stupid for hooplos. Um, you have two buttons only. You have a threshold button and a mode button. Now, when you put the batteries in, you have to hold this down. And then what happens is this flicks on. And you get the red light indicating there's a change. Now, what, what am I monitoring right now? What I'm monitoring right now is dose rate, gamma radiation dose rate. So I know a lot of people don't like science, uh, as is pretty apparent from Canadian Prepper's uh, Human Cause Client Change video comment section. But there's effectively five types of radiation that we have to worry about as preppers. X-rays, gamma rays, and beta rays. This is actually able to give me an estimation of all of those. Alpha rays and neutron rays, this will not pick up. Now alpha rays are easily stopped by skin and paper. Alpha radiation is a major problem if you're going to drink it or eat it or inhale it. So that's a definite problem. But you'll have that anyway in a post-nuclear accident, post-nuclear war environment. The other one is neutron. Now, if a neutron bomb or a neutron star has exploded close enough to the Earth to actually cause significant human problems, you're going to be dead anyway. So I'm not actually too bothered about that. The one thing this won't monitor, that people might want it to, is electromagnetic spectrum in the 5G range. So if you're actually very worried about cell phones, uh, don't have one. <laughs> That's my advice first off, if you're worried about them. And the second one is that this will not do anything for that. Now it's been on a little while. I would leave this on for a minute or two, probably two or three minutes, and then I'm going to look at the result, and I'll see what's there. Now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to change my glasses. So I actually found these glasses from a company called Resident Glass in Toronto. I'm going to do a video on them. Anyway, the prescription reading and prescription distance and prescription sunglasses, and each one cost me 49 Canadian dollars, is ethically sourced, and is made out of recycled Canadian plastic money. Pretty, bit, pretty good, eh? Anyway, so what I'm measuring right now is 0.13. So the normal is supposed to be about 0 0.1, 0 0.11. So this is insignificant. It's not a huge deal. It's what I'd expect. I wouldn't expect there to be significant radiation source in the area. Now, there is another button, and this is the cool part of this. So when I press it again, you see the red light comes up and it goes to zero. What it's now going to measure is dose accumulated. So I would use the first button and figure out, hey, is it safe to be outside? And if it isn't safe to be outside, would it be okay to go out for a little while, depending on the reading, the actual effective dose reading? And then I'd flick it on this, and then I'd wander around outside, and then I would be able to see my accumulated dose happening. Now, I would only use this if I was actually walking over an area that hadn't changed, that I had already scanned with the first button, to make sure that I'm not actually walking by huge accumulated sources. And as you can see, this will take some time to increase uh, because there's not that much radiation here. 
which is cool. Now, one of the things you might be wondering at this point is what about the threshold? The threshold on this is preset and I believe 0.3 and I'm not going to get into civets and rems and the rest of it in this video I've covered that before in other videos on nuclear and I'll try and link them below if I get the time and energy but basically this is going to let me know if there's a hazard to my health and that's the most important part of this for me I know that I'm going to try and stay underground for 90 days in a nuclear event I know that I'm going to experience radiation when I come up. This is going to tell me quite clearly, yes, it's safe to be up. No, it's not safe to be up. Or it might be safe to be up for a little while, but limit your time. So that's the key thing with this. Now, the margin of error with this is 20 to 25 percent error. But that's good enough for me. These things are very, very expensive. Now, you can, of course, buy the traditional ones, the recycled Civil War ones from the 1960s and 70s. Uh, generally speaking, they will cost the same as this once you've actually sent it away to have it calibrated because that's the expensive thing. So it doesn't directly measure x-rays, but it's kind of good for uh, figuring that out. It does directly measure gamma radiation and it indirectly measures beta radiation. Now, it's been some time and I still haven't accumulated any particular dosage, which is good. Uh, if I wanted to actually accumulate, uh, test out, estimate beta radiation, when I press it again, it goes red again and then it flicks onto this one. And to actually really estimate beta, you go to the back panel, and what you do is you open the back panel, like so, not losing this, and you have this here, which is scientific. And to estimate the beta particles, you hold it in place for a little while. So this would be useful for scanning clothing and food and water that may have accumulated beta particles. And if you really had the money, I'd actually get two of these or maybe three of these for each fa family member because what you would have at that point is you could use it for beta dose testing in your area but you can also when you hit the mode button and you go back to the actual dose, it's accumulated dose, is there, that's the time. And this was really easy to set. It comes in Ukrainian time. I actually set this really easy. And I'm not really good at doing stuff like that. So we go back to the original and we'll see what the dose is. And as you can see, or maybe not see, it takes a little bit of time to click in and figure it out. And it'll be probably 0.11, so I'll put it down and talk about some other stuff. So they say it takes 32 seconds to 60 seconds to actually be accurate with this. And here we go. And the dose is going to vary, right? This is going to vary with a lot of things. Solar activity, wind direction, how much granite is in your walls, uh, all of that sort of stuff. I believe this is not exactly great for testing radon. I would, if you suspect radon, um, which is a gas, I would have that properly tested independently. But as a go-to device, this is pretty good. So if I was actually testing clothing and stuff, you put it near the clothing. Like say I'm testing the camera, I put it near the camera, okay, and I'll leave it for 60 seconds to figure it out. It's going to tell me the dose around the monitor, and if it's near to me, the dose around me. So it's not going to be able to go, oh, right there, you've got a bit of dirt on that's causing problems, okay? It's not that accurate. There are machines that are that accurate, but they cost about 2,000 American dollars. And I'm not spending 2,000 American dollars on something I hope I never have to use. You can see various pictures of various doses around the world. So what you've got to remember with radiation is cumulative and it doesn't affect everybody equally. Above a certain level we all die, below a certain level nobody dies, and, but at any level cancer rates will increase from the no level. It's natural, it's normal, don't worry about it too much. So say 100 people get 350 rems of radiation, that's equivalent to about 3.5 sieverts, and then about half of them will die in about 60 days. Okay. So that's a death rate of 50% in 60 days. So this actually monitors in micro sieverts, and the range is 0 to 999 micro sieverts. So it's going up to about 10 sieverts an hour as a maximum on this. At 10 sieverts an hour, I'm in a lot of trouble. I've got to get distance away from the source of radiation if I can. I've got to get barriers between me and the source of radiation if I can, and I've got to stay away from that source of radiation as long as possible. So although this won't actually 
tell me that there's a, a mega radiation exposure going on. What it will tell me is, hey, you're getting about 10 severts an hour. You're going to die. That's what I know. That's, all, that's why I need to know. That's what I'll be basing my stuff on in the highly unlikely event of a serious nuclear incident affecting me or in the possible event of a nuclear war. I'm experiencing 0.1 sievert an hour. On an average day, on the average person on the earth will receive about 10 micro sieverts as an accumulated dose over the 24 hours. If you find a plane from LA to New York or from New York to LA, you're going to receive about 40 micro sieverts just for the flight. And if you go and have a dental x-ray done, you're going to get about 100 micro sieverts. So the threshold of this is set pretty low, and you can alter the threshold, but I don't know how. And I'm not going to. I'm actually quite comfortable with the pre-setup that they've got. So there we go, point one. So now I'm going to turn it off. Turn it off, you hold it for six seconds. Lights on, and it's off. Now the storage for this for me, well, I wanted to get used to it, know how to use it. It's going to be inside a Faraday cage with the batteries removed. And there will be extra batteries there, both regular batteries and also rechargeable batteries and the methods to recharge them using solar in the Faraday cage. Uh, if we have a nuclear war, I won't be using this for about at least 28 days because you can get exposure to EMP pulses and this is transistors in some degree and I don't believe it's hardened to EMP and I want to use it later on. Now what they sent me was a nice little plastic baggie and they sent me some instruction information. And this is, although it's a Ukrainian company, actually is a great source of advice. It's really useful. It actually works. You know how you get these instruction buckles for some of this and you go, oh, I don't agree with it. It actually is very clear. And I was very, very happy with it. So I'm very happy with the purchase. I hope I never use it. The one thing I'm not happy with is the free leather case that came with it. I don't know how this is supposed to fit into this, but most people have these don't, they just have them like this. There is no hook on this, belt hook on this, whereas it is on this one. So I actually think it would be nice to put it in the case, which would make it somewhat more waterproof. But you actually put it in inverted, and I honestly can't get the thing in. <laughs> Maybe I can if I try harder, but it really, really doesn't go in very easily. And then when you zip it up, I'm not getting it. It's just not working for me. Um, I just can't get it in. And that's the problem I sometimes have. But put in like this and a clip, it actually is going to work fairly well. And you can actually activate it through the plastic, which is a nice feature. But yeah, it doesn't quite fit. Now it's very firm in here. Uh, maybe I'll try moistening the leather and letting it dry out and try and stretching it. Because uh, I think it actually would be worth to have it in this. So over about 365 micro sieverts an hour is a, basically the maximum occupational dose that you can get. So like I say, with this reading up to uh, 9,999 micro sieverts per hour, it's going to tell me I'm going to die. It's going to tell me that the radiation dose is low enough that I can risk walking around. It can tell me the radiation dose is high enough that I can risk walking around but be very careful and don't stay out too long. So I'm really happy with this. The other thing I'm really happy with is uh, this guy, Matt. He sent me this and uh, I'm just going to put in a free bonus advertisement for him. He has a nice site and he does some interesting videos. And he has probably one of the sexiest voices in prepping. And he's a true New Yorker and in true New York style. I don't think he likes New York anymore and he's actually moving to some rural somewhere or other. I'm not quite sure where so his videos will change. Uh, but he's a nice guy and uh, he's very thoughtful and although we don't actually see eye to eye on a lot of politics he actually is uh, one of the people that you need to be looking at and following in prepping to actually learn stuff because the bigger channels have all sold out anyway prep plan and SHCF won't be as bad as you think it might be doodles uh, guys not much I could do about that this morning but um Anyway, I have a person check check my receipt at the self checkout register. Then I have a person.